I have another small battery operated chainsaw that I want to share with you. This is the CC 6 inch electric chainsaw. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before we get started, just a couple of things. First, this saw was sent to me for testing and review, and I'll be leaving a link where you can take another look at the saw in the video description below. Now, the next thing is, I just want to talk about small electric or battery operated chainsaws for a moment. So this is the second saw of this type that I've reviewed recently. And uh, I just wanna reiterate my thoughts on using small saws like this. So first off, I'm not declaring this as any type of a bushcraft tool or even a tool that you're likely to take hiking. Having said that, I'll share my experiences with you taking this out in the woods on a day hike. But I position this more as something that you can use car camping, absolutely, certainly around the house, around the yard for doing the small things that you're likely to do there. But I did also say that this is something that you may decide would be good for you if you have limited mobility or limited physical ability to operate any other type of saw because this really does make uh, cutting up small pieces of wood at least very easy. All right, having said those things, what I will do is just focus in on the saw for a few moments, very briefly go over its physical dimensions and that type of thing show you what it came with, but I want to talk about my experiences in using it. All right, let's get started. All right, before we focus in on the saw directly, it's only fair that I show you what it came with. So let me put the saw aside for a moment. This is the case the saw arrived in. Again, it's very much like the last saw that I shared with you, and actually a lot of power tools or battery-operated power tools you're going to buy in any, pretty much any hardware store. Nice hard plastic case hinged with double clasps on it. Uh, you know, maybe too big for carrying in your backpack. Well, it is too big for carrying in your backpack, let's be clear on that. But maybe not so bad for putting in your vehicle for if you're taking a car camping. And of course you want something like this to keep everything together around the house. So it's the items inside. Now, here is improvement number one over the other saw, chain guard. I really appreciate it when I opened this box up to see that there was a chain guard to go with this so I didn't have to come up with something to cover over the end of the saw when I did put it in my backpack. So I'll be keeping that for sure. You do need a manual. Well, you should read the manual. Let's put it that way, because there is obviously some good information in here as well as warranty information. And I'm gonna talk about the recommendations around oiling that are specifically in this manual in a moment. So what else do you get? A spare chain, which is good. Now, mind you again, as I mentioned last time, this is a real chainsaw chain. It just happens to be one sized for a six inch bar. So it can be sharpened just like any other chainsaw chain can. So you get the one that's included and a spare one just in case. You get two 21 volt lithium ion batteries and I have one installed on the device right now. Of course you need a means of charging them so there is your charging block. Uh, the things that maybe not all that useful but you know it's, I suppose it's nice that they include it is this pair of cotton gloves as a safety piece of equipment. I don't know that I would trust these to save my hands from the chainsaw itself but you know when you're handling pieces of wood maybe it'll help save you from splinters but I'm sure there are other uses for a pair of gloves. I'm sure you'll find some use for these right? This is of course something that's worth having and that is a pair of safety goggles. Always worth having because this will throw chips without question. So nice to have those. Now one thing that you'll notice that's not in this that you would normally have with a chainsaw is hearing protection. You don't need it with this. This is a very low sounding tool as you'll see when I get it outside. And the last thing I have to pop it from its case is this small Phillips screwdriver which is a use for adjusting the chain. So let me put the case out of the way at least bring the saw back into the picture. So I'm very briefly going to go over the physical specs for this and to start with bar length. I already mentioned this is at six inch chainsaw bar so not very long at all which is 152 millimeters. Overall length of this device is 15.7 inches or 400 millimeters and the weight for this device with the battery installed is two pounds 10 ounces or 1.186 kilograms. Now as far as the performance specifications the only thing that I will tell you that I have information on of course is the chain speed which is 780 rpm and it does run on those 21 volt lithium ion batteries. So 
There is a couple of features on this that I think are worth noting and I do have comments on. The one that I think is most important is this and this is something that's different from any of the other handheld chain electric chainsaws that I've seen before and that is an oil pump something to oil the chain with. So yeah this was definitely different from the last one so the concept here is is that you have a reserv reservoir here where you'd pour chainsaw oil in and I did go to the manual and it does say that you can use any normal chainsaw oil for this that would make sense of course and then there's this bubble pump right here so uh, I, I gotta be honest I was a little bit wondering if this would be effective or not and it is only when it's warm out and that's my qualification on this so I did fill it with a lightweight chainsaw oil because I am now in the middle of winter and I took this out in the woods as you'll see in a few minutes time and what I found is that the bubble was too stiff to press when it got cold so it, I, it's it's not a feature that I see as a big benefit to have on this chainsaw but it's not a bad feature either so here's the thing I'd say about it if it's warm enough that you can press the chainsaw bubble to oil the chain then that's fine and if it's not so warm and it's cold like you'll see in my demonstrations then just do it the way you would do it on others and that is oil the chain directly and I do keep a small canister of oil just for that reason that I can just run around the chain every so often to keep it lubricated while I'm using it and it works just as well so I didn't feel handicapped by the fact that this pump was not working during its operation as far as I'm concerned. All right, now let me just talk a little bit about its operation and then I'll share my experiences with it. All right, as far as operating the CC battery operated chainsaw, first thing to take into consideration is that this is a real power tool. It has a really sharp cutting edge and if you're not safe with it then of course you can do not only damage to yourself but you can damage the machine itself. So you do want to pay attention to safety when you're operating with this device. So and the same thing when it applies when you're out in the woods and you're cutting wood if it's not just a stick laying across a bench that you're cutting into firewood but you're actually doing some cutting on trees or whatever you want to apply the same safety procedures you would use with any saw regardless if it's a chainsaw or a hand operated saw so I'll get that out of the way now as far as using this device goes I start with the battery the battery is the 21 volt lithium ion battery as I mentioned before installs on the bottom I mean it's virtually identical to many of the battery operated power tools that you can get I mentioned it does have two of them it does have a safety for the trigger so there is the safety you would press the safety in before pressing the trigger itself you can see the trigger is locked out if I press the safety in and then operate the uh, trigger then it, the chainsaw operates itself it does have the safety cover over the bar on top just prevent a, um, wood from flying back in your face but again I would always recommend using goggles just to protect yourself now as far as re uh, replacing the chain or adjusting the chain for the right tension there is that manual and that screwdriver inside to help you do that it's something that you should get used to doing because they do get slack over a little bit of time and operation so Basic, basic operation is what I'm going to say about this. Now, as far as its performance and its limitations go, you're going to see when the video that I um, bring in in just a few moments time that primarily I'm cutting branches from a downed spruce tree. And so the branches are not very big. They average on one inch to one and a half inches. Maybe a, a few of them are up to two, two inches, at least in the video. So uh, alone, the video clip is kind of limited, but I will tell you now that I did use this to cut that complete tree up to the limits that this saw would do. So I removed all of the branches from the tree and I was able to go to the far end, the distal end of the tree and cut through. I could not cut through the main trunk of the tree because of the size. So as far as size goes, four inches, maybe five inches, as long as you have it supported and you work around the trunk, you can probably cut that deep if you're patient and don't press on the saw. Let the saw do the work. I know that's traditional of any saw, you don't press on it, but very, it's it's really easy with a saw like this to want to press down to make it go faster. Don't just let the saw do its own work and, and let it go down through the wood. And uh, but at the same time, I would say stay within four inches. Now, this is softwood that I'm cutting, a dead spruce tree again, but I did use it on hardwood branches, cutting them to length for firewood. I don't have any recordings of that, but again, the same thing up uh, two inches, maybe that's this is as uh, a larger diameter that I cut with this. So 
very much within the mission or the scope, we will, of operation for a saw like this. It's not meant to take down big trees. It's not meant to cut large pieces of firewood. It's meant to cut small pieces of wood, but as you can see, it can do a pretty good sized job. Now, the other thing I want to mention from the video you're about to see is I used this saw to do the complete tree, as I mentioned, cleared the path right out of the way, and um, I barely seemed to really use much of the energy of the battery. Uh, you know, it was no problem. I had lots of battery power length. I could have done the whole job all over again and still had battery power left. So I was very impressed with it, just how little energy it took to do the amount of work I got out of it that day. So uh, let me introduce the scenario. I'll roll in the piece of footage and then we'll come back and close this video up. So basically, uh, I, I am a trail steward for the Friends of, or the Blue Mountain Birch Cove Lakes Wilderness Area and uh, I went out one day to clear some dead wood uh, that had come down in the recent windstorm and there was one very large spruce tree laying directly on the path and rather than have people braid trail braid which is what it's called in other words create new trails out and around the existing trail I chose to take this tree down in pieces and then stack the branches and everything off to the sides and yeah it actually probably took me no more than 30-40 minutes to get the entire job done and this saw made that work so much easier. Could I have taken out another saw with me? Well, in fact, I did have my silky oak back, uh, big boy with me, big boy, gone boy, big boy, I guess it is, in the pack, I didn't have to use it. And I really, I took this saw out for testing and so I can get some footage of it being used, but I did have a backup if I needed it. I just didn't need it in this case. So I just want to point that out before you show the video. Now let's roll that video clip in. All right, so I brought the uh, CC chainsaw out with me today. Uh, good opportunity to test it out and get some work done at the same time. Uh, you can probably see here there's a large old, I think hemlock could be, yeah it's hemlock that has come down in a recent windstorm right in the path and uh, a lot of small branches inch to inch and a half that are perfect for using the chainsaw on and then I've got my larger a silky saw that I can take the trunk down in sections. So it's going to be a bit of work. I'm going to start and uh, see if we can't get a few of these down. Make sure the trunk is not going to roll on me when I start taking pressure off some of the limbs. So I'll start with the upright limbs. Let's see where this goes. Yeah, that was easy enough. Now I think I'll just do the upright ones for now and then I can go to the ones that are holding the tree up after a bit. Oh, there's a lot of them though. But, I'm not having any problems. No binding. But I'm gonna be here for a while doing this. So far, so good. I think that's a supporting branch down there. Well, yeah, I'll work my way up the tree, taking all the top ones off, and then I'll come back and do the lower ones where it may be spring-loaded uh, spring or the tree may be resting on them. If I take those off, the tree has a chance of rolling, but I'll be prepared for that. But first, let's get all these out of the way. All right, let's wrap this video up with a few closing comments for the CC 6-inch battery operated electric chainsaw. So what do I think it's really well, or what it's really good at? Well, let's keep in mind what the mission is for a saw like this. So begin with, it is not a full-size gas operated saw. It's not a full-size electric battery operated saw. It is a small handheld tool, so it will have its limitations. And now by as far as limitations go, I'm talking about cutting branches or pieces of wood maximum four inches in diameter. You may be able to stretch it to something five and maybe even six inches diameter, but I would say to be on the safe side, stay within four inches in diameter. Now, I know that doesn't sound like an awful lot, but it, but that, but it does have real possibilities. Number one, using this around your home or around your camp, this will make light work of a lot of the small chores that you might have there. Taking this car camping will allow you to cut up firewood that you would otherwise have to do by hand. And for people who 
have limited mobility in their shoulders or their arms, this will make the job a lot easier and still able to cut up firewood without a lot of strain. Now, my experiences using this is it operated fine, very fine. It was cold temperatures. Uh, the battery barely used any of the energy in that entire experience cutting down that large uh, spruce tree. I still had plenty of battery power left. Now, I did pack backpack it out that day. It's not something I would take often for trail clearing, but I wanted to take it out just so I could record that video. I needed to cut the tree up anyway. Normally, I'd probably take a box saw or a folding saw, but you know, after having done that, I would actually consider taking this out again for all those small jobs that just don't require a lot of a big saw or a powerful saw. So yeah, now having said that, that tree was at about the limit of what I would try and do with any small saw. It, the trunk, while well, I couldn't cut the larger part of the trunk, I could only cut the fur out end of the trunk with this saw. After that, it would have had to go to my backpack or my one of my folding saws or even a gas powered chainsaw, you know, if it had been a much bigger tree than that. So those are my experiences. Um, I think this operates really well within its intended mission. Um, but does it have any cons? Well, I'm going to call this a relative con, certainly not a deal breaker. Is I'm just not enamored or I don't think uh, a lot about the oil pump on the outside of it here. The reservoir holds oil just fine and it doesn't leak as long as you get the cap on tight. It's just that I found it challenging pressing down on the button when I was out in the woods because it was, I don't know, minus five, minus eight degrees Celsius that day. Uh, yeah, so I found that a little bit challenging. But then again, again, not a deal breaker because I can still oil the chain with a small bottle of oil that I, a, a squeeze bottle of oil that I carry with me just for that purpose. The battery operated, uh, or the battery uh, life was great for that period of time. I could have done that tree again without actually, without having exhausted the battery, without even having to go into the second battery. So this is not a long-term review of this, but for the use I've put it through, it stood up very well. And I expect that I'll be used this often, or at least as often as I need to use something like this in the future. All right, that's all I have to say about the CC battery operated electric chainsaw. I'll be putting all the information I have in regarding the specifications as well as the links to where you can take a closer look at it in the video description below. If you have any comments or questions, put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.